uh, one thing you can put your finger on that's going to make you succeed more than the next person. But using Dan example and even us, mm -hmm. he came into an industry and there was a, a void. Your viral coefficient is not playing into that stigma. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Never Settle Mindcast. Of course, I'm Jason Conforti. I'm here with a very special guest today, a good friend of mine, Peter Lemke. He's accomplished businessman, entrepreneur, owner of Gaslamp District Media Group on the board, also the host of his own podcast, In the Weeds. Um, you should check that out if you haven't already. Good morning, man. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. Good morning. It's my pleasure. Weird being on this side of the podcast. I love it. I know. I've got to keep you on your toes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So, man, I... I don't even know where to start. We got a lot and we can go for a long time, but give everyone who maybe doesn't know you a little brief background about where you come from, how you ended up in San Diego um, in your industry. Yeah, yeah, I think for starters, as I was driving over here, I realized you're one of my longest dated relationships in San Diego. So it's, it's really interesting to watch, you know, you grow, I'm sure vice versa, me grow. Oh, yeah. But uh, there's a few people that you have, I mean, it's eight, nine, almost 10 years. And, and I've lived here for July will be 11 years. So, um, segueing in that, I came here from Arizona, um, with two of my best buddies out there and one's now my business partner. About two years in, we decided to go into business together. We we're both, we're both working in hospitality in some fashion. Shout out to Kev, Kevin, Kevin McLaughlin, my yeah. partner. <laughs> um, and we got into, I think that was around when we, we met, you we were like a year into starting a bus company. So we were in, in, I say luxury buses, but they're party buses. Um, and we knew nothing about it. Uh, we just knew that it was really popular and, and, and you might've been a little bit more, that was before the family and kids and everything, a little bit yeah. more active out. So <laughs> that was when you'd see buses literally coming in and out of, ga of the gas lamp, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. Um, he worked at one of the bigger nightclubs down here. Um, so we, we decided, Hey, let's, let's take a, a, a step into that space without knowing anything. Um, and I could tell you like all of my like greatest, greatest entrepreneurial business owning stories come from those first years because we were just trial and erring and trial and erring in, in a really difficult, challenging business. Cause, uh, even though people see party buses and the bells and whistles, we have to follow all the same rules and regulations as like the MTS and the, the charter bus companies, which we weren't at first. Um, <laughs> we were learning as, as we went, but we, within six months of starting, became the second biggest bus operation with eight buses for a couple of guys who um, didn't know anything. And since then, you know, like we've grown that and, and we have, we've started multiple other businesses, but it was always as a supplement to that bus, um, bus company. And a lot of people think bus company, how does that correspond or, or, or um, line up with what we're doing now because we're heavy into promotions and marketing and events and now we open our restaurant but we were big in hospitality and and our first few accounts were with like the hard rock hotels of the world the mm -hmm. nightclubs we were getting their weekly contracts so we built relationships and we were building a relationship capital and then we just started no recognizing voids in the market like uh you know a lot of these places didn't have proper marketing teams in-house so soliciting that service one led to another and now we're i guess the best way to describe it is like a, an agency um an agency. So yeah. it, it's great, man. It's been, it's been a fun ride. It's, that's probably the very like condensed down, condensed down version of it, but it's been fun. Yeah. I mean, definitely condensed. We can, we can dive into, I'm sure many memorable stories, but I can tell you over the years, nearly 10 years, I think that makes us official. <laughs> um, seeing the growth I've always watched and celebrated your success, you know, because even when you started the bus company, like when we first met, you were getting in the bus business and doing that. I knew people in the nightlife business and the entertainment mm -hmm. business. And generally, it's a hard market to crack because those relationships are already there. Mm -hmm. And for you to take on a contract, that means someone else isn't getting it who may have been in the market first. And mm -hmm. you, you're a businessman. You navigated all those. But it, the cool thing that impressed me is that you always came in with hard work. Like mm -hmm. you were never afraid of that, never afraid to grind and figure out ways to solve problems or solve them more efficiently. Mm -hmm. And you never had like an ego about it. Like I'm the bus guy. You were like totally. so open and honest about like, we're getting into this and there's like fires coming up every day and you figure it out and you, you know, I, I yeah. always thought that was like, okay, he's, he's got a winner's mindset. He's the humble warrior over there and he's working hard. Um, with gas up media. Now 
you have the restaurant, which we'll get to, mm-hmm. you know, which is exciting to me and I can't have it for another 26 days. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I just keep rubbing it in, but you know, day 31, I'll be there. But now for the gas like media, you, you branched out and you, you weren't satisfied. You didn't settle with just having the bus, you know, you added those value adds on, mm-hmm. um, when you're building those relationships, can you walk us through sort of how, how did that happen? Was that just something that just sort of as a businessman naturally progressed, you saw an opportunity or mm-hmm. was there sort of like a, a strategic plan to always start with one and then expand? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, well, me and Kev and, and you know him uh, pretty well, you know, we're relationship guys as is, even mm-hmm. if it's like friendships, you know, like you just, you, you connect with people and, 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 and when you get into business, you realize, yes, you have to have a good product or service that you offer, but there's also a much bigger value in doing business with people you like, Oh yeah. you know, and, and you being, being in law too, I'm sure that you, you come across the same things is like, he can, he can do a hell of a case. And so can he, 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 mm-hmm. but you just want to do business with people that you like and realizing that. And it's funny, it wasn't until like a year ago that I heard the, the term relationship capital coined. And I'm like, God, I think I've been searching for that, that term for years, um, is we've always wanted to build and build and build our relationship capital. And there's been periods in the 10 years of doing it that I've noticed myself, I've got so bogged down or busy that I stopped doing that. And I feel like it's one of my greatest strengths. And actually as of like the last, which was a, a big motivator behind starting a podcast for me, um, was starting to get back a little bit more to my roots of, of regathering relationships and understanding like, Hey, what got me here now isn't necessarily what's going to get me to where I'm going. Mm-hmm. So I have to like reach out and put more, more effort into the bigger relationships, you know, and like not saying any of the relationships we built in the past were any less or any, any inferior, but you know, your goals just get bigger, um, where you want to go gets a, a bigger a road you want to go down. So you realize you have to have certain doors open and, and those doors are held open by, by bigger, more powerful people. And, yeah. um, and those people have the same interest in doing business with people they like. And, uh, it's, it's tough because a lot of things become building our brands become so social digital, which is important. Mm-hmm. But I remind even our staff, I'm like, it's, it's much easier to cut off a digital, uh, relationship than it is to cut off this. You know, and, and if you have, yeah, you know, like it's, it's much easier to be like, Hey, I don't know the person whose name's behind this email, but you're done Yeah. versus like, man, I've known that guy for nine years and he came to my kid's second birthday and we went to Cabo together and that and like, it's a little bit more time consuming, but it's a whole lot like on both sides, you work harder to keep the relationship going, you work harder to keep your business going. And, and I think it, 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 you have more transparency. Like we've had some great, we have partnerships still five, six plus years that we're still working with. And, uh, when the times are bad, you you know, they're much more open about it versus just totally clipping it. And we might have to pivot or adjust, but we understand like, Hey, your business has taken a little bit of a swing. We'll swing with you Yeah. versus just, there's no relationship. So, Hey, times are tough. Like right now is a good example. You know, when you're coming out of this, I I'm trying to use this time to really, um, double down on, on relationships because I understand, coming out of it, those are going to be super important. And, and when people had like this whole world shut down, what's the first thing you leaned on for like to feel better, to feel alive was your relationships. Yeah. And that's what I did. You know, like you got to have the business, got to have that, everything that gets you out of bed. But I'm like, man, some of the phone calls I made during this with people I've known for years were just as important, just Mm -hmm. as important for So trying to use that time and so on to, to uh, sharpen the old networking sword. But, uh, yeah. And, and, it, and it's one of those, like, if you don't have it, I don't, I don't want to say it's not unteachable. Um, but you have to have a level of commitment to it. You oh, know, yeah. you have to, and, and I, and I can tell when I've kind of lost it where you're just like, man, I just don't want to go to that function. I've had mm-hmm. a long day and you have kids, uh-huh. which is a different level. Like, <laughs> and, and how many times you said, I just don't want to go. I just yeah. don't. And I had a period like that was all the time. And, um, so I'm trying to, make that shuffle that towards the front of my deck of priorities now. Um, which, which is important. Oh yeah. No, that's a great term. I I don't know who coined it, but that's genius Mm -hmm. because relationship capital, like it's everything. And especially when you're talking about, you know, we can dive into goal setting and pivoting and all these focal points that you mentioned that I think people need to understand what that is because not everything for Mm -hmm. you has been 
you know, oh, I wanted to go to San Diego. Here's the yellow brick road. Follow here. Totally, go to the beach. Yeah. You get everything. And then when you end, you get the big house in La Jolla. There's a nice one there next to the Razor House. You know, it's not the way it works. Like, mm-hmm. you have to adjust and pivot. But people, it amazes me every day, even in law, life, anywhere, especially in law. And it was one of the first lessons I learned from my mentors were like, don't be an asshole. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's so silly. Like, I never wanted to be an asshole. There's times when you you got somebody and you have to press that point for your client's interest because that's what I'm there for. Totally. But I'm talking about, like, when you're in the court and there's a deputy there and you're going in, say good morning. Just totally. basic social etiquette because then when you're going to the big doors or you're, you're dealing with the clerks, and guess what? All those clerks talk to judges. but And you're at that level where people are begging for your business. People are so blind to the fact, like, this, I'm here. I can mm-hmm. pick and choose who I want to do business with because I have a lucrative contract. I'm getting paid either way. Mm-hmm. You'd be foolish to think that that guy's going to choose the one that he doesn't like or that woman's going to choose to work with this person, right? And mm-hmm. it's, it's such a basic principle that I think would better the world, not just your brand or your business, but because that reaps values and rewards. And you're just a natural relationship builder. Like you, you yeah. seem to be tied into like, I know this person. And then it's not surprising me. Oh, yeah, yeah I know Pete. Mm-hmm. They'll show up at Lem 30. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know. I haven't heard that term in a long time. You gotta, I had it. I had it right here. I got a couple a couple in the oh, pocket. Oh, that's so. good. All right. But you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't surprise me. And, like, I didn't know that term relationship capital, but it, it I know exactly what it means. And it's perfect because I would like to describe that because I know I focus on building relationships, but I also slack off. Right? Totally. Because like, you get busy. And it's funny you, what you said, too, about not being an asshole. Because I've had this conversation with several people is you get a point or I'm at least at a point where you can't really lay out a scenario for me that would require me to be an asshole, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and most of the time if someone's being an asshole to you, um, it's more of a, a reflection of what they have inside of them, you mm-hmm. know? And so if they're going to bring that out of you, well, you know, my question is why? And, and, and if you did something, as long as you're living a completely from relationship to, the clerk you're talking about to your best friend, to your wife, as long as you're living everything like with integrity and, and complete honesty, then they shouldn't have a reason. Even if you give, give them bad news, it's okay. They shouldn't have a reason to ever be an asshole to you. So if yeah. someone's just projecting to be an asshole and you give it back, it's like, well, now you're on their, now you're on their level, mm-hmm. you know? And that was a really hard, and, and talk about coming from hospitality and nightlife. And it, it was really hard taming the ego through it. Um, because you're surrounded by egos, you're surrounded yeah. by assholes, you're surrounded by that. And, and the hardest part was, was maintaining discipline, um, and not letting that rub off because you even on, on your level, totally your level, totally different profession and industry. You've probably seen several people who've converted into the asshole, mm-hmm. converted into the ego. And most of those people you could probably say aren't doing the job anymore. They yeah. don't have the business anymore. And that's, and, and once you start realizing from that, from my perspective, I'm like, there's a business in this. There's a big business in this, a lot of money in this. But if I'm going to do the same thing he, he, and he did, then I'm going to be in the same position as them too. So I have to, I have to right certain wrongs. And it's really hard to do in this type of industry where you, it's almost like applauded yeah. to, to be the, e- to have the ego, to have, to be the asshole. So it's, it's a, it's difficult. You yeah. Know? You gotta, you gotta shake it up. I mean, and there's you know, Dan, friend of ours, right? Mm-hmm. Um, business partner of yours. I mean, he has the same mentality too. Um, similar, different situation with respect to changing an industry, um, which he talked about on Jeff's podcast, but it's, it's so crazy and it's so common sense to like, just do things the right way. Mm-hmm. Like just be fair, treat people fair. You don't just because everyone else is being an asshole and that's the way everyone's done it the whole time doesn't mean Mm -hmm. that that's the way you should do it because there's certain people like yourself who have bigger, better, more powerful visions for what your goals are, right? Like I can do that. I'm not saying you're doing a bad job, but I can just do it better and bring a level of, I don't know, mindfulness, appreciation, respect to where we can back down a lot of the toxicity that doesn't need to be there in an already stressful job, especially nightlife when you have alcohol and all these other things involved that cause, you know, liability, whatever, um, to back that down. But I know what you mean in that industry, people are celebrating like the guy who has the most flash who may be sleeping in his car, but if it's not on the gram, nobody knows. And we want to celebrate that guy cause he's the man. Totally. Right? It, it, and it's funny you mentioned Dan because it's similar and he's in, 
in, uh, in law as well in personal injury, which has a stigma for mm-hmm. sure. Everybody knows what that stigma is. And we were in a conference in Miami, uh, me, him and a buddy of his that he grew up with from Seattle, who's opening a gym right now. And they, they, they said a term to me for the, that I'd never heard uh, viral coefficient. Like what's the viral co- coefficient of your gym? Meaning like what sets you apart? What's going to make you go viral? Like what's your difference maker? Yeah. And I said, I don't always think it's some sort of new piece of technology or some outlandish, uh, one thing you can put your finger on that's going to make you succeed more than the next person. But using Dan example and even us, Mm -hmm. he came into an industry and there was a a void. Your viral coefficient is not playing into that stigma. And he, and he didn't, you know, like he's the complete opposite of every personal injury law firm. That's your viral coefficient. You don't have any new tech. You don't have any new software. You don't have... Your lawyers didn't go to different schools. They all came mm-hmm. out of, of law school. You just have cho- you saw the void and it is a big void and you're filling it. And guess what? Now you're going to start people. If, if they haven't already, other firms are going to do the same thing. For us, it was, it was the same thing in hospitality is the viral coefficient was when do you see anybody who was working in nightlife for hospitality who was focused on, you know, health, wellness, no ego, all that. Like that was a coefficient. Why do you think now we start, we've worked with bigger and better properties and places and owners it's that, you know, yeah. so it, it was a funny lesson learned and he, and he challenged me on it, you know, because I think there's a lot of people who are striking big off, you know, some sort of one little sliver of like tech or something that's their viral coefficient. They just absolutely mainstream I'm like, no, man, you got to look at what you've done, you know? And, and I think that that's an important, important. Yeah. And I, uh, to piggyback on that, that's gold, right? That's mm-hmm. really gold and super insightful. And I, on top of that, the last thing you said of like what you've done, one thing like we can all control is accomplishments, whatever they come with our work, but working on yourself, you know totally. what I mean? Yeah. Like if you put yourself in the best version of yourself every day and you're better than you were yesterday, you know, through habits and routines and, and things that we'll talk about that you do, um, then you're going to be in the best position to succeed or to see that opportunity mm-hmm. that maybe if you're not working on yourself, you're stressed out maybe about you have a health issue that could have been avoided. And because you're stressed, you missed a connection and a conversation totally. that was there. And you didn't know that that was a huge door that just flew right by you into a lifetime of business. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because someone was just casual conversation and you're going through your own problems because you're having, I don't know, a health issue stress because you were making poor choices and you're sort of a cold asshole stressed out trying to figure Mm -hmm. out, Oh, how am I gonna deal with this bill? Am I going to get into the doctor? And like, you miss that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like those are real things that happen. Yeah. It's, it's funny too. And I'll I'll use like, um, your cleanse as an example. (laughs) Damn. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I'm bringing it up. Well, it's, it's impressive only because, you know, I know you have a family at home. I also know mm-hmm. you keep a really big prof- work schedule, professional schedule, obviously you're doing this. And I, I know firsthand how much time goes into this too, that it, the much easier road to take would be what you talked about before we turned the cameras on was like, yeah. still just grabbing a slice of pizza, doing the, the, un, like the brainless diet that you used to before, but mm-hmm. your vehicle, which this is your vehicle, you wouldn't be the best, like you would come home and be a lackluster husband or father or all that. So like, it's really impressive. Even at your state with, with the amount of responsibility, like I'm going to put my body through this fucking miserable seeming cleanse. Yeah. But it's for the, the big picture goal of like, I want to be the best version of myself. And I also want to still chase down those things that like adding a podcast to your life's pie chart of things mm-hmm. to do is probably like, fuck. Oh you, yeah. It's like, fuck really. And your wife might even be like, really, Jason, you're oh. going to add that now too. Yep. But if you don't, if you don't combat it with, well, no, I'm going to be the absolute best version, which means taking care of every part of your vehicle. Then it makes more sense. Yep. You know, if you were to, if you were to do all the stuff like, you know, sleeping in or going to bed late and just and eating terribly, not exercising, like, and then you took on this, then it'd kind of be, be selfish, you know, cause yeah. you're gonna have to give up being as good of a dad or being as good somewhere in you, you know? So I, I think that that's uh, that's an example, but it's a relevant example as I stare at that bottle of juice that you got that you're pumping through your body. So yeah, it's B vitamins, baby, <laughs> <laughs> no coffee for 30 days, Oof, man. You know, that's thank tough. God, you know, thank God G's in it with me because you know, it would be so hard like totally. that cleanse now that we're there. Like it's so hard when I do like when I, we just had Gianna and I do like my little bulking phase or whatever workout thing I was doing for like four, six, eight weeks, I'd have to, you know, figure out, all right, what do you guys want to eat? And mm-hmm. we'd figure it out, you know, and then I'd have to do my own 
separate thing. Now it's like fun because she's like, maybe yeah, I'll do it with you. I'm like, you sure? She's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's one of the most determined, headstrong people that I've ever met. So if she's in, she's in. And mm-hmm. she'll just let you know how she feels about it, but she won't quit. And so now that it's like we have ours, we take care of the kids first, make sure that they're fed and that they have everything they need stocked up and fed. And then we are on our, our meal prep. And it's totally. so much, it's hard and, and it takes discipline, but it's so much easier having that teammate with you. You know what I mean? To make that make that thing go. That's I was gonna say that's got to be huge. And and hearing that's is is great because I have I I have friends and I'm sure you know people too that it's so easy to build these walls of responsibility walls with mm-hmm. you, you know you whether it's buying a house, getting married, having kids, your career, all that. And the first thing that you let go is your personal like stuff that's personal to you. Yeah. So I have a kid, I don't go to the gym anymore. Mm-hmm. You know stuff like that. I have a kid, I no longer play in my men's basketball league. I get married. I no longer, you know, you know, the, yeah. the give and take where, where I don't think that has to be the case. And, and I think that's when you start seeing when you catch up with a buddy you haven't seen in five, 10 years and they're extremely overweight and they don't, they have a temperament. They don't seem fucking happy. Well, it's like, well, you slowly just let go of all those things that made you, you, yeah. you know, everything else is important. But I think if you, if you kept it one by one and we're, we're conscious of it and having the partner with you is, is so much, it's, it's nicer. It's a nicer luxury to have. But I watch too many friends who they just like, I, I think they're in fear that it would be selfish if I still went to the gym while I have a newborn at home. You know, there, there's a compromise there, oh, yeah. you know, because you have to like, you have to be the best version of you. And, and it's easy for me saying that a, a single guy <laughs> who my, my biggest responsibility is my fucking eight year old dog. It's a big um, dog. It's a great dog. <laughs> but, but it, it's, this comes just as a lesson learning. I, I'm now at an age where I have a lot of friends who are married. Most are on like kid number two. And I do have a, a category of friends who they've still maintained, mm-hmm. you know, what really keeps their personal engine running. But I also have some who just like slowly let one by one by one. And that's when you, I feel like you just, you look back on a lot of regret and, and a lot of regret, you know? 100%. And though I'm no relationship expert, but we all know it. We've all seen it. And from the outside, like that person doesn't know they've let go of one by one by one, all the dominoes fall because they're looking mm-hmm. at each little snippet, right? Micro, like don't even remember the last four things I gave up, but I just, yeah, no, what, what's the big deal? I just gave up poker night. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? and at the time it seems like I'm doing the right thing mm-hmm. because for my family and, and yeah, and a good example, like, okay, well, if you're still doing poker night three nights a week, this is where yeah. the compromise comes in. Yep. But the stuff that keeps you like the best version of you don't let go of that so quick, you know? And if you mm-hmm. have someone who's, who's good at home, like, gee, they, and they understand that as well fuck, that's huge. You know, yeah. if you have, if you have someone who, who totally doesn't understand that, that would be a challenge. But, uh, I, I can't tell you how many times it, it drives me crazy to see, to see friends who like slowly let go of, of those things. And it's killing me, but no, it does. And like, I have this image in my head of like the guy used to be cool and gives up everything and blows up and be fat. And then the wife does it up from the outside doesn't appear the girlfriend doesn't appear to be compromising they're still on the ig you know and nothing wrong with that but every time you see him like yoga just went to you know yeah, yeah. went to my bar class went to this went to that and like okay and then at the end you want to like now these people don't even look like they're on the same wavelength mm-hmm. right i know love's deeper than physical appearance whatever but and then one of them went off and had a different relationship either because maybe the guy felt insecure and needed a little pump up or the girl just was in a more surf totally, and the, the guy by giving up everything or that partner by giving up everything worked themselves, lost everything that made them great and worked themselves into like the worst version of themselves. Yeah. Right. And it's like, I'm, I'm thankful every day, not just cause it's recorded and she's going to see it for mm-hmm. my wife. And I tell her because she's my best friend. She understands a hundred percent what I go through at work because she's a lawyer. Yeah, right? yeah so true. So having responded clients and the pressures and the stressfulness of the job where husband and wife comes first, without that, like, then we build our family, we got our kids, so we have all these responsibilities and it's a give and take, right? Mm-hmm. I can't go to poker night three likes a week, but if I want to do something, she'll support me. Totally. With the expectation I still adhere to the same level of standards and responsibilities that come first, which is my job as a husband and a father, mm-hmm. right? And so then it comes into the prioritization, time management, scheduling, right? Mm-hmm. Um, That's great. You know, and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I know that I have relationships like that. I've been in others that aren't like that. We all have, you know, mm-hmm. but 
you know, it's something I don't take for granted every day because I can't do what I do without her. Mm -hmm. You know, that's right. I can't. And it's, it goes both ways. Like I was on IG this morning giving her shit because she's had her hands full lately, but everything's court call. So she mm -hmm. borrowed a backpack so she didn't have to juggle, you know, with like the <laughs> Corona. She didn't have to juggle up the elevator. And I, you know, being an asshole was like, oh, I have a good first day at school. You know? <laughs> but, you know, she had fun with it. That's funny, man. Yeah. That's um, really cool. But let's talk about sort of your your routines, because when you're mentioning the things that people give up, like there's certain things that are people call them non-negotiables or like things you have to do to mm -hmm. make best self. Like mm -hmm. we're, let's you have the ice plunge thing. Yeah, we're talk yeah. about that. You, you got Jim. What are, what are some of those things for you that make you in the best physical mental state to operate the level you need to operate to adhere to all responsibilities with your companies and your partnerships? Totally. Yeah. Um, exercise first and foremost. And I think that's just, I understand how, how good it is for the body, but I, most of the exercise I do actually enjoy being there. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not as much a, like a weightlifter as much anymore. I like to box and I like to do hit workouts, all that, where I like it, uh, it might be part of a group more, you know, being an athlete growing up, it feels like a little bit more competitive, um, to be in. So exercises is, is, is up there, if not the number one nutrition's one, um, you know, uh, about two years ago, I got really big into mental health and, and which, which is, is a lot of things, you know, just keeping a clear mind, um, which can be sitting in a sauna, can be sitting in the, the ice pad. It, it can be sitting with just your own thoughts. And I, and, and man, if I could tell you the one thing that I think is happening to a lot of people is they're just, so they won't just sit with their own thoughts and some of my best times and decision-making, even like during, during this quarantine is I still make time for that. Um, is when all like my most creative and, and, and big picture, little picture thoughts come through. It's just being alone with your thoughts. And, and when we're in a constant state of being surrounded by people physically in front of people, but also digitally in front yeah. of people, as I tell everybody, we are constantly, constantly being distracted. When do you actually just sit down and not have anything that's taking you off you? Yeah. You know, and, 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 and it's really hard to, to channel. And I've had this conversation and your, your dad, my, my sister has a 14 and a 17 or a seven year old is I said, you have to train them to understand that too, because I I'll go home and visit them and, and they can be digitally distracted and they don't have a quota. They'll yeah. stay on that thing for fuck, especially a 14 year old. They'll stay on it for hours and hours mm -hmm. and they won't be like, Oh my God, I've done too much Instagram today. No, no they won't. And, and to really just have like a collective thought that that's super important. And, and I find it in a lot of different ways, you know, but I, I forcibly make sure that I have uninterrupted, like, um, nothing coming in, nothing going out time, uh, which has been really important. Could I stop you there? Yeah. Cause I have a quota with my kids on the digital stuff and I a hundred percent agree with that. And mm -hmm. my kids know it and they play their grandparents. So they sneak their iPads to grandma's house. Cause my gran yep. like, our kids are like, you don't get screen time, phone time, whether it's your iPads or your phones. And obviously they didn't buy them themselves. I gave it to them and there's certain strengths to being familiar with technology and the, there's engagement material on there, but mm -hmm. Left to their own devices, literally, they'll be on it all day. But they know f Friday, FDNs, family date night. After dinner on Friday night, you can have That's your cool. you can have your iPad until Sunday afternoon. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. we limit cool. it during those days. But those are the only times that that's an option. But what's it look like? Like when's your time? Does it vary, or is there a set like set time where you have a, a meditation or just a, a no distractions? Is it the morning, afternoon, length always of the time? Morning. Always? always the morning. Yeah. I don't, I, it's, it's hard to carve out any other time where I don't like, it's hard to creep it. It'll creep into my thoughts. If it's two, three o'clock in the afternoon, I know this one's inbound. This is going over at the, at the office and this is going on here. I, I, I can channel it, but in the morning and it's why I wake up as early as I do. I know that there's nothing coming at me mm -hmm. and, and I can be as like, as in tune with myself in the morning. And it's just like that, uh, you kind of get the feeling that nobody else is really up, up and hustling and bustling. It has nothing to do with like, I'm not promoting, I tell anybody, like, I'm not promoting, you don't have to get up early. Yeah. If you, some people can do that um, later at night. Some people can do that when, whenever you can do it. It's great. But for me, like I have like this peacefulness in the morning and interrupting that it, it shows an effect the rest of the day, you know, and some mornings it'll be, you know, 20, 30 minutes. Some mornings it'll be like today it's funny. And whenever I have, a, I have my own podcast is mm -hmm. I try in the morning to have no connection to uh, work. Um, or to social media as best as possible. Cause I just like to be as clear minded as possible. If I came in here stressed, stressed about, even though there might be some stresses going on, we just opened a restaurant last week. Yeah. I wouldn't be me. 
and, and it's funny, it shows too, because I walk in a lot more calm, collect than when I normally walk into the office on a, what is it, a Thursday, on a Thursday morning. That's a, that's a, a, a really big, but really big detail for me. But the mornings by far are, is that time. What time do you wake up? My body just naturally, it's so crazy, man. Between the, the window of 5.30 and 6, I'm just up. It doesn't matter what time I go to bed. And it's been like this for a long, I've even asked me, I'm like, is this, is this normal? Like, yeah. Like that when it's always, I'm always up. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is when daylight savings happen. That's the only time it might flip a little, but I have the same half hour window, which is so bizarre, which is more of a reason. Like, all right, I'm getting cocktails. It's 11. Now we're approaching 12. I'm still going to be up at that time. Yeah. Um, but I have that same window, which, and I, and I, and I don't, it's like, cool. I get up and maybe I'm just a product of, of, of habit and my body's got a, an internal clock that's deeper than I thought. I'm up. I'm up. That's why I've, I haven't put an, an alarm on for, dude, I couldn't tell you. That was yeah. my next question. If you have an alarm no. just in case, or you just, no, I, I bought one of those old school alarms in my room because, uh, I was trying to, I got really big last year into sleep research mm -hmm. because I know I'll never be an eight hour a night guy. Um, but I know I can get, um, less time, whether it's six or seven hours if I get really quality yeah. sleep and I came across this guy's book and then I got really big into it for a while. Like which book, um, sleep smarter. What's, right. what's the author's name? He was on uh, he was on Tom's podcast. I want to say it's sleep smarter. Um, but he gave, well, I love books that give you objective things to do, not subjective. Like you yep. should, like it was objectively what to do. And there's a lot of stuff he pointed out and stuff that I added into my nightly habits actually it's around the clock like when to cut off caffeine yep. what to do the first the hour before bed what to do when you first wake up not having your phone in, 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 in your bed like yeah. you know i started wearing and i'm saying this as a grown man I'm, i wear an eye mask at night too yeah. you know like it's little things and, and then slowly and I, I bought this aura ring which tracks the sleeping too but i was slowly starting to see like my my sleep states get better and better and better just by tweaking those things the biggest one you have dogs do you have dogs yeah and this was the last one i did Cause it was really difficult. Kick them my, out of the bed. Don't have your dog sleep in bed. Yeah. yeah that was the last one. And, and the look, I could still remember the night I'm like, Moose. Hmm. It was like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? <laughs> and he did. And I swear that next morning, I'm like, maybe it was a placebo effect that next morning. I'm like, oh my God, I feel so good. But I got a 120 pound dog in there who's moving around yeah. and shaking. The next thing you know, like woke me up at three in the morning. You know, I'm out now I'm out of my sleep state. So I got big on, okay, if I'm not going to get eight, I'm going to get really good fucking six hours or seven yeah. hours in. So yeah. Do you turn the Wi-Fi off at night too, or you just take the phone out of the bed? Just take the phone out. And, and, and I'd like to say I'm like, I'm disciplined with it, but I, there's times I could be better, you know, especially right mm -hmm. now too, is, is opening the restaurant. Like I'll be finishing up some stuff, which I hate doing. You know, I try not to bring work home as much anymore. And, mm -hmm. and again, I don't have a wife and kids, so it's not, it's not, it's even harder being disciplined. So I'm not getting home than immediately laptop up and yeah. all that. But lately we've just had a little bit more, um, going on that I'll get home and I'm working on a laptop till right before I go to bed. But I know I'm going to transition out of this, this little phase, mm -hmm. but it's putting it out, like plugged in out in the kitchen because at the end of the day, what the fuck do you need it for? You yeah. know, you know, and, and now the first thing you, I, I used to do is like wake up and what do you check is those top two or three apps, which are just fucking ludicrous. And then it, it'll, it'll spike your emotion. Like all yeah. of a sudden you're either like happy, pissed off, uh, panicked. I'm like, I'm not doing that in the first hour I wake up. That'll yeah. come. Let that, that come. I got 23 other hours of the day to do that. So, yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's good because you, you've, implemented it you were aware you needed to adjust something and your body's not going to change so how do we improve and investing in getting more quality sleep is it seems now a no-brainer but so many people aren't aware of like things they can do to improve their sleeping environment mm -hmm. um, even people with kids um the morning i'm a huge morning guy i mm -hmm. love getting up in the morning my little boy he wakes me up all the time throughout the night because sometimes he still wants to come to our bed or whatever he he's not nearly as good of a sleeper as his sister was like she mm -hmm. was the fool you baby like three and a half months <laughs> give her a bottle oh, put her down i would do my thing she would do her thing then i'd dream feed her change her diaper and she'd sleep the whole night that's and then awesome this dude was up like every 90 minutes to like three hours for basically two years Damn. um but now like i love getting up in the morning for those same things you mentioned like there's nobody mm -hmm. else up i can see actually see jeff's condo 
I can see his patio from my balcony. So I always try to see like, is he up? Is he up? Like, Lights he, on? Is that a real, did he really do that video this morning? <laughs> you know, I'm checking on him. You know, and he's got roller shades now. Um, but oh, that's funny. He wasn't aware that I could see his unit, like mm-hmm. his exact unit. And he was like, no way. He knows now. Oh, he knows because okay. I, I was on the phone with him. He's like, no, you can't, dog. Shut up. And so I was like, put your flashlight on your phone. He was laying in bed and I took a video of him. Going <laughs> like, he's like, he's like, bro. And I'm like, yeah, dude. Like, oh, that's I can comedy. see. Um, that's so, comedy. like, I look there because I know I should see a light on over there eventually because he's up or sometimes I miss him or vice mm-hmm. versa. And he does his thing and then gets on with his workout. But I love that time in the morning, the theta state where, especially when the kids are down. And the big thing with all this connectivity and, and technology is people have gotten used to the fact, like, if I send you a text, without saying it, I sort of expect a re- reply in a mm-hmm. decent amount of time just because mm-hmm. we've conditioned ourselves where back in the day, you have to write a letter, yeah, you get the yeah. mail, it goes, you know there's going to be time for that mail to be processed, you get it, they're going to need to respond, send it back. Totally, yeah. Not now. So, like, at that hour of the day, I don't mess with my phone at all other than to turn on some sort of, like, affirmations. Um, I'm trying to figure out if there's a way I can get those to play without me having to actually open my phone and face the possibility mm-hmm. of a distraction or if there's mm-hmm. like an alert from a text or something. Um, but that time and that theta state where I'm, I, I really, I was telling Drissa the other day, I'm like, I, it was the weirdest thing. Like I felt like I was in a trance. It wasn't like a flow mm-hmm. state cause I wasn't active, but it was a deep theta style, like sleepwalking state where I was there relaxing with my thoughts, affirmations in, head back, totally, eyes closed with zero fear of falling back to sleep, which is rare because mm-hmm. I work my ass off and I'm yeah. busy all day. If I sit down like, oh, babe, let's watch a movie, like you don't even get through the credits and no. I'm out, yep. right? So like I was so weird out, but I was like, I was totally conscious, but my body was relaxed. I wasn't going to fall asleep. And it's like the energy boost I get from that little activity and setting my intentions for the day. Mm-hmm. really shapes everything like hundred percent you know i used to check my phone when i got up yeah and what would it do like especially oh okay well i checked my phone that took time and then i get stressed that i'm running late because i took time away from doing everything i need to, do to get out of the house because i checked the stupid phone mm-hmm. and then the message on that phone made me feel even more like shit i better get to the office i gotta respond to this right so it took time totally. and then added a time crunch where if you just ignore that message until you get there and you're in your space ready to work the house didn't burn down. People aren't dying. Absolutely. But like, that's the hardest part is like realizing that they're not going to get up and be dissatisfied and move on. Right. Like the client's not going to leave because you, you yeah. didn't respond at 6 AM. You waited till eight or eight 30 when you got to your desk and you blocked out your email time. You yeah. Know? I, and I think people don't, they overlook that where they just, they feel obligated to mm-hmm. and, and they don't realize to put themselves in that state in the morning or afternoon or evening. Most of the times it's your choice. It's yeah. your choice to do it. And and for you, like, that's a great point. And I, I can relate, like wh- whatever the email, if it's a client on the end of the email, I have the rest of the day when I'm in my suit and working as if yeah. I'm you to think about that, to deal with that at six in the morning when I'm in front of my kid, my wife, I don't want to be thinking about that client's fucking problem. No. Now I'm, now I'm in my home in the morning in front of my family and you're going to be thinking about it. Yep. You're going to be thinking about 100%. it. hundred percent. So you're looking in front of your kids like, and, and you can't help it. And you're probably more prone to be like, I got to go. I got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. I got to go. So, but we do that to ourselves because oh, yeah. everything is so, so accessible. And, and I used to have, I used to take major pride in being like, dude, email always on it. Text yeah. always on it because we have, we're, our agency is very client, client based. So like mm-hmm. they have needs and wants, and then we have our staff needs and wants. And I'm like, no one will ever have, you, you'll always get a response. Yeah. And that shit's exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting. And, and furthermore, I want to try and minimize how much that, that's running through my mind because then guess what's not running through my mind? The other stuff that I really want, like yeah. the stuff about me and all that. It's like, it's a really hard training, but we bring it on, we bring it on ourselves most of the time. No, it's a hundred percent. But there was like, I remember like the hustle, the grind, and I still work my ass off. I, I work harder and more efficiently than ever now because mm-hmm. I have more time constraints with the family life and two kids and their schooling and extracurriculars. Um, but when I first started, it was like, nothing's holding me back. I'll fire off emails any day of the week. You yeah. want to pick a little legal battle right now? One yeah. thirty, let's do it. A couple <laughs> tequila shots in, you're going to get it. Like I'll give it to you, you totally, know? Man. And yeah. there's like, that's another reason why I don't, we make the conscious decision not to bring work home. Like it's great to have that sounding board and have another legal mind, not just someone that's like, Oh, that sounds good, honey. You mm-hmm. know, but someone will actually pick me apart and say, no, that shit ain't going to work mm-hmm. or like add this. That's an additional benefit. But the other one is like, 
Jason, the lawyer, when I'm, I know, and my friends tell me, like when I'm in the lawyer mode, I'm fact checking everything and I'm questioning everything and I'm, I'm there to, I'm 100%. in the fight. Like I'm dealing with federal criminal defense is like, it's, it's bet the company that I represent companies is bet the company litigation. Mm-hmm. They get hit with this and the collateral consequences of a debarment, then they're losing revenue streams and, you know, treble damages, you name it. Like I need to be a killer in there within yep. the rules. Like that's why they're here. And it's not about being an asshole. It's being, you, you set them up, you Absolutely. see that moment and you seize it and you never let it go because mm-hmm. they won't let go of you. You know what I mean? And so I don't want to bring that home to my kids. No, you gotta be able to turn it off. Yeah. If I start lawyering my, like, yeah. they would be like, dad, you're an asshole. Like, yeah. What are you doing, Daddy? Yeah, not you know? turning that off is not healthy. No. That's that's even even like to your wife, even to your mm-hmm. friends. Yeah. You, know, you gotta be able to turn that off. It's funny because I always give shit to anybody friends, because I have friends who have like who have two phones. hmm And I don't think it's for this reason. And and I, I feel like you you'd probably relate to doing this. I've had the same number since I was in high school. And so through all the companies, through all my past jobs, through all people I've swapped numbers with. It's that same number I've considered take, like, I need to go get a new phone. And then ever, so when you come home and be like, that one gets plugged in, in the, in the spare room and here's my other phone. So if God forbid something went wrong, I still have yeah. channels in and out, but whatever's on that, like I choose now you get this number, you get, mm-hmm. and anytime that phone rings, it's literally, you know, it's going to be just someone like your family, your friends. It's not going to be a fucking, it could be a problem, but it's not going to be like those day to day, the stuff that yeah. you're talking about. I'm like, I think it, I haven't committed on it, but I've been talking about it lately is, is getting a new number be like, yo, I'm out. Emails won't be on this phone. Yeah. You know, might not even have the social media apps, all that. This is like the dude, I'm going out to have a drink with the buddy and this phone's coming with me, yeah. you know? So, but I haven't gotten there yet. Well, you're putting it, you're putting it out you're setting the intention out there and yeah. the universe is going to happen. That's yeah. Step yeah. One. The more I talk about it, I got to actually own up to it. So I think it could work. Yeah. A good friend of mine, one of my mentors, he actually has that. Oh, really? He has, he has that. And like, I never thought about doing that mm-hmm. until I had heard about it and you're on that track. So you're, you're yeah. coming up. I haven't done it yet either. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking about just getting not quite a burner phone just has a bad context, but totally. basically, you know, like he, Zeke takes his phone and he says, this one's on, this number is on and operational for these things between this hour and then like six thirty, or whatever it is. And mm-hmm. that's it. And then he has another number that only if you're in like the circle of trust that you can reach mm-hmm. out if you need him. But mm-hmm. otherwise it's like, this is my time and it, he needs it's, it. It's because we, it's impossible to not be connected right now. And in mm-hmm. a lot of ways that's good. You know, our connection, the way you can get through to someone now, like you were saying before, it used to just be a handwritten or snail mail. Yeah. Now it's, it's a text, it's a DM, it's an email. It's, there's so many different ways to get people to get through to them or to get their attention. It gets to me sometimes exhausting where I just want to be disconnected completely. Two, mm-hmm. two birthdays ago, I decided to check into a, a beach hotel in Mission Beach and I left everything at home. I left my phone, my computer. I probably should have told some people I was doing this, but I'm just <laughs> like, dude, I had plans the day after. I was going out to Arizona. I've always, I'm a big UFC fan, so um, Kev mm-hmm. got us tickets. Like on a, the week, I was like, by the way, we're going to fucking watch the UFC fight. Yeah. So four of us load up. So I'm like, okay, I got something that I'm, I know I'm doing for my birthday that's kind of a celebration. But man, right now, I just, it was, it was, my birthday's in February, and that's right before like our really madness season. We had a really crazy January and February. I'm like, my goal that, this was last year, my goal was I need to do once a quarter where I have isolation period. 48 mm-hmm. hours, 72 hours. And I looked at my birthday weekend and I'm like, okay, if I don't do it now, I know what's coming up in March and the weekends and all that. I'm pretty much tied up. I had some obligations and shit. I'm like, I have to do it now. It's weird mm-hmm. to do it on my birthday, but I did it. And dude, not having no phone, no phone, no computer, no nothing. It was really, really bizarre. And there was a point I'm like, well, I'm not going to be making any like big moves. Like, but I, I went and had a steak dinner, just steak dinner myself at Saskas right there in Mission <laughs> Beach. I couldn't even call a lift. So I'm like, fuck, I got to go old school on this. So I went down to the, like the hotel lobby. I'm like, Hey, can you get me like a cab or an Uber, which was a really bizarre thing to say. I'm like, otherwise I'm going to hoof it there and I'm going to walk yeah. all the way down there. But it took me back. Like I went to, I went to yoga class the morning of my birthday and I'm like, um, I don't have a membership there. Um, I guess I'm just going to walk in. I don't know what time the classes are cause I don't have access to the web. <laughs> so I literally walked, but it was one of those times where I'm like, I'm not obligated. Like, cool. I got there and the next class wasn't for 45 minutes. I'm going to walk across the street and kill some time. I went yeah. to the Trader Joe's over there, kill some time. It felt like being 
back like how we were growing up, you know, where when mm -hmm. you're gone and you didn't have the landline, you're just gone. Yeah. And it was really cool. In hindsight, I should have told like my mother mm -hmm. or some people because you know, at, on your birthday, everybody's reaching out. Hey, oh, yeah. this. And I didn't really think that through. I was just so like into it. I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. And uh, they like were panicky. But of uh, course. And, and the next morning when we were going, we were driving out to Arizona for the UFC fight. We decided to get all of us meet four of us for, for breakfast together. And I'm like, cool, I'm going to go to my condo, get my phone, my computer stuff, my bag, meet them at breakfast. And then one of the other guys was driving and I wasn't ready to, to come back on the phone. Like went to breakfast, didn't got in the car, driving down the road, didn't. I'm like, and now I'm talking with them and the four mm -hmm. of us, like we're all four really close buddies. And it took me a while. I'm like, there was something nice about just the fucking, the nothing, the nothingness. So free. It. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which which I think people are kind of getting right now, even though they have all sorts of connectivity during the pandemic, but it's it's shut off so many different outlets. Mm -hmm. Right now that you're hearing people saying, like, I went for a, a five mile walk. Like, who's yeah. ever done that? And I went and like the stuff people are doing, like, that's not that bizarre. Yeah. It's not bizarre. Some of the stuff people are saying they're doing right now. We've just created these like walls and distractions and other shit that it, it seems so fucking weird to be like, hey, I'm, I'm going to just go out the house and not come back for like an hour and a half just walking. Well, that's weird. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Kill time. And at that time, it was socially acceptable to be out walking around to go outside. You know, otherwise, you're supposed to be inside. So, people were using that as a reason to pretend that they're being active. Some people actually did it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Other people were just, you know. And you, th and you wonder why people like say the value of, of meditation and, and self, self like thinking time. And I had 48 hours of that which, which was really cool. And, and now like it's, it's become a little bit more routine driven for me. I haven't followed the quarterly goal. Um, but all I had to think about then was, was, was me and like, and I'm like, okay, I'm embarking on another year. And the mm -hmm. best time to do that is most people do it new year. Some people do it on their birthday. I'm like, what a great time to think about, fuck, we're coming up on so much busy, 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 but what do I want before I get on the hamster wheel? What do I want? And yeah. like, Spending that, it was actually really productive. I came out of it very clear-minded on, okay, I know I'm about to get extremely busy, but I don't want to sacrifice this or this or this because I've been down that road, you yeah. know? Um, so it, it, it was a great little first experiment that we've ran, I've ran back since then. That's cool. So No, yeah, getting clarity, set, setting your intentions and goals. It's awesome. We got to catch a fight together when Vegas opens back up. 100%. I'm itching. I know. I don't know if you watched the ones, like I was definitely glued to the TV on... Uh, on his last, he had three in a week, which was yeah. like, I think made up for everybody's time off from, from UFC fights. But what do you I, think of that Gaethje Ferguson fight? Well, it was exactly what people thought it was going to be in just a fucking war. Mm -hmm. And these guys are so goddamn tough. But I was telling a friend, I'm like, could you imagine it's 25 straight minutes of you or I punching someone in the face? Cause they stood up the whole time. Yeah. And we're not like, sure, we can throw a punch, but Gaethje is a professional punch thrower for lack of better words. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's probably the best pound for pound. And this guy, Tony, who's just the, the toughest guy in the world, just took 25 minutes from the toughest pound for pound striker. Where I'm going with it is like, it's kind of scary, man. Like the, what's going to, what's happened up here and the amount of like, you know, four ounce gloves aren't, are, you might as well just take them off. You know, yeah. if anything, they're giving you more stability because your hands are wrapped and more stable and you can actually do more damage. Yeah. But when I saw him like, and, and you saw that last one, the ref finally called it. Where he shook. That's his brain saying, what are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Otherwise I'm just going to fucking turn off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. But then I'm, I'm sitting on the fan side and I'm standing up on my feet, fucking jumping up and down for it. So it's crazy. It's not, it was, it was insane. It was one of those ones that lived up to the hype. Like it was mm -hmm. going to be a war. I, Tony's never going to make an excuse, but knowing the way he's fought his whole career, but specifically like this run the last eight years and his cardio never, ever flinching or letting off the gas, him starting out like a half step, even slower than he usually appears to be not taking anything away from Justin Gaethje because totally. he fought a perfect fight and the, everyone's talking about it. I'm no ESPN, UFC commentator, totally. you know what I mean? But being an athlete and a fight fan and knowing these disciplines, like you heard his coach say, which maybe he wouldn't have heard if there was a crowd as clearly or reacted, but like take a little bit off it. Just hit him with good clean shots instead of overthrowing it. He made those adjustments. He got out mm -hmm. of the damage, not taking anything away from him. He won the fight. But I think that Tony's ceremonial weight cut it two weeks impact. before 
and he's never going to fall in that excuse. He's not saying it. That's something he wanted to do. He didn't care. He knows his body better than ever. Like anyone could tell him, but I, that has that drains your body, 100%. and it, to, to, like reset and do it again in two weeks is. I I don't know if it would have been different if he was at full strength. Maybe maybe it would have made the fight just go faster and was a two or three round fight. Um, but that was a monster fight. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. and I think I, I heard the same argument about the wake up, which. which Watching it, you're like, what a badass. And I think mm-hmm. that's what he wants. He wants to make sure he's always known as a badass. He yeah. posted it. I still made weight even though the fight's been canceled. But you also got to be, you got to be smart too, mm-hmm. you know, and, and keeping your body where you're not weight cutting, you know how much damage that I've watched videos on some of these weight cuts since like, it's scary. Oh, yeah. Guys passing out in the sauna and guys dropping on the treadmill in the suits. Mm-hmm. Like that's not, if you can avoid that, it's oh, probably, yeah. it's probably better for you because you're going to be fighting another three, four weeks. But that's what makes him him. And and dude, have you been live? No. <sighs> Going live's rad. Going live's rad. I, I couldn't imagine, like, we're never going to be able to. But sitting ringside with no fans, mm-hmm. th- and you hear some of the commentators even say, like, the sound, the noise, everything you hear, it's intense, man. But the uh, uh, I've been to the the Vegas uh, MGM arena. I've been to the one in Arizona. And it's, a, it's an energy unlike any other sports. Yeah, so I was all pumped to go to a UFC event. Um, in college, I think I just got out of college, Rampage and Chuck. Mm. Yeah. Old school. Great tickets. Yeah. And you're with those dudes that just played a little long, party a little long, and like, I, totally. I'm about the event, I want to go. And they're like, no, no, we'll be fine, it's good, we got time, we got time. One of my friends, it was like, one of those three layers removed, like one of my good friends from college, his friend's brother was one of Chuck's trainers like sure. train with them San Luis Obispo he's like no we got time it's always later and this that and we're in the fucking cab stuck in traffic on the strip and you just hear people no. going nuts because Rampage already turned them out oh. I know oh, I know I'd so, be furious I, I was there in December and I forcibly made my friends go like we were there for the, the early early prelims I'm mm-hmm. like guys I flew here for this I've seen everything Vegas has to offer at this point point. Yeah. and we even went to Lavo Brunch I'm mm-hmm. like, let's have a couple of drinks before. <laughs> and I would, same thing with some were my buddies, some were a couple other buddies that I was meeting there and they get in a lava brunch and they're like, let's just fucking stay here. I'm oh like, yeah. You guys can stay. I am going and I'm catching that first fight. Even if the arena's empty, I don't care. And we did. So it was, that would drive me crazy though. Yeah. No, that was, yeah. But we'll go. We'll catch one. For sure. What they were supposed th- to be in San Diego last week. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw that and they had to move it because all this nonsense. But yeah, uh, we will. It's exciting. The um, let's talk about this ice plunge, ice bath. Wh- what made you want to do it? Why do you do it? Have How you done long it? do you sit in there? I've done an ice plunge. I don't have like okay. a little freezer ice tub at my house. That's okay. some next level shit. But like, it's mental toughness. I've jumped in the crazy lake thing. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I've never made it like part of my routine. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's not, you're not out there all the time, like jumping in it, but like you posted about it here and there. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, what's it about, man? Well, it started years ago. Cause I actually took, uh, I, I, I boxed in the industry boxing. So I, mm-hmm. I, I did a boxing amateur boxing belt and a buddy of mine introduced me to cryotherapy and cryotherapy is great. Uh, it's an expensive habit to keep up. Mm-hmm. And it's also an obligation. You have to now, there's few and far in the county. You have to drive and go there. And any way I can eliminate a drive or dis, even like my gym, I walk to my gym, the convenience. So I was at a seminar. Um, I don't know if you follow Aubrey Marcus. He's the owner of On It uh, okay. Supplements. Mm-hmm. He had a seminar in Santa Monica two Novembers ago. And I went up there just myself because I'm, I'm a big believer. He's in all the similar stuff we're talking about health and wellness. And he had some guest speakers. It was a full weekend. It was in, like intertwined with like there was yoga each morning, and, and it was at the the low Santa Monica on the beach. I'm like, if anything, dude, this is gonna be a great little 48 hours to myself. And uh, one of the speakers, he lived in Santa Monica, and his name's Aaron Alexander. He gave a presentation, and up on one of the slides was in his back little because it's just like San Diego, very small little backyards. Yeah. Uh, and he, he had, he runs a podcast and every time he has someone on podcast, the first thing they do is they go in the, in his ice plunge and he just went through the slide and I'm like, fuck, what, what, what was that? Mm-hmm. And so after this was like a hundred person, they cut it a hundred people. So it was a really small conference, which was, was cool. It was a lot more intimate. I grabbed him afterwards. I'm like, Hey, Aaron, uh, I live in San Diego. I have a space issue too. Like, what was that, that you, that you had people sitting in? And he legit was like, here's a link. Just go to home Depot. It's four or 500 bucks. Um, 
and getting to what, what the benefits of it are is it's, it's, it's extremely good for recovery. So like, you know, between boxing and working out and, and just overall, like our day to day schedule, mm -hmm. you have to put some attention into letting your body recover. And if anybody who played sports back in our day, like you literally sat in an ice, tub. like a bucket tub. Yeah. And the reason being was you just had, whether it's two a days or a long practice of beating your body up, it was the, the, the best way to get like, you know, to cover up inflammation and just to recover. So when I went and looked at them, I'm like, okay, well this could, this could fit on my balcony. And it became a recovery thing for me because I'm like, I'm getting a little bit older. So the body takes a little more wear and tear and supplements can only go so far. But then it was also a really cool thing in the morning, instead of like caffeinating to get your body going, mm -hmm. bro, sit in 40 degree water, like get out there and sit in 40 degree water. Like I, I now have more of a rule. Like I have to earn my caffeine in the morning where I, there was a point in time where I'd roll out of bed and it's like, press the brew, get it going. Where now I have like, no, that's like the fourth or fifth line of defense. But you sit in, in a cold plunge and you've in 40 degrees for three to five minutes you don't need the coffee for a while and your, and, it, and your body's now like you think about when you wake up, you've just been laying horizontal for however many hours you sleep. You know, people just kind of expect their body just to naturally be like, Oh, I'm, I'm ready. Like, no motherfucker. You've been asleep for the last six, like give us, give us a little runway here. And so in time it's now just become like my daily. There's sometimes too, where I'll, I'll, I'll have a midday or if I know I'm like going out in the evening, I'll do a second one in the night just to give like an added boost so I'm not relying on, all right, I need to take a double special shot or other sources of, of energy. So there's a lot of benefit, man. Yeah. So is benefit. it like a freezer you put water in? Or yeah, it's an actual commercial freezer. So I just fill it to, you know, about, I don't know, it goes up to my neck, but it's about halfway filled. Plug it in, um, gets it down. I have a little rubber ducky thermostat that floats around in there like it's a little mini hot tub. And, uh, I get it down to like between 30 and 40 and then it'll stay at that for a couple of weeks. And then every couple of weeks I have to plug it back in and get it back down. But, uh, it's great. And, and, it, and the hardest part, if uh, the majority of people I tell are like, Oh no, never, never. especially girls like, Oh, mm -hmm. never, never. The hardest part is like anything else that's challenging is even now is the first like initial getting in, but it's the same thing. Like going to the gym, what's the hardest part? walking through the door. Then when yeah. you get in the groove, you're, you're up and running for me. It's still like the, okay, I'm going from a nice, calm, comfortable, warm body. Mm -hmm. It's that initial, but I swear to you now I've gotten to the point where when I get in like that first 10 seconds, you control the breathing and I sit down, like I could fucking ride it out for a while. And it actually is almost like somewhat soothing. You wouldn't think sitting in freezing cold water, but now like, dude, that is my, my zone. It's crazy. Every day, every day, nice. every day. Yeah. And I, and I'll tell you, I noticed the difference because I was on so such a daily routine with it now for after I got back from that conference it was two Novembers ago. So I've been on it for a while. Um, I got some, some more tattoo work done and mm -hmm. I was finishing my back and you can't really be submersed in water. Yeah. And I was also adamant on, I'm finishing this, this thing in one, like I'm going back to back to back round. So I had like almost two months where I couldn't really be in the the plunge because I had fresh healing ink, yep. and my body, I felt it 100% felt it like just little aches and pains and joints and other shit. So I was like itching after I got done with the, the, the full piece to be back in there. So it was, it was a good to know, like, this isn't a placebo thing. Like there is a difference this is making. So, yeah. Yeah. Now you got me wanting to try it. So I'm, I'm see if we you, can man. work it in. I'm telling you, okay. you'll get the wife on board. She'll like it. Maybe even the kids, you uh, know, start no, them I, early. I mean, I don't want to say never, but I don't think she'd ever, <laughs> do, ever do it. She yeah. hates being cold. That's like the constant battle between us. Mm -hmm. Like she, like I'm always hot and like, she's always cold. It's mm -hmm. just, just the way it goes. But that's you're good, something. With, you're good with your words. You can convince her. I'm going to try my best. <laughs> we'll see. I'll send you a picture if I can make it happen. Oh, I love it. Um, let's we got a couple, couple more things to cover. So one thing you posted a while ago and you had a, you had a good write up on it. It was like real thoughtful it, and it's, it stuck with me cause I had never heard it before, but it's like, to me, it really stuck with me. You posted some, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. You mm -hmm. remember that? Mm -hmm. Like, can you talk about that a little bit? And like with that mindset, because I know what it, the takeaway was for me mm -hmm. and I, I'm just curious because that was something that you didn't post it for me clearly, but you mm -hmm. were just putting out there, sharing your thoughts and like. I read, I was like, damn, like yeah. that's, that's super true. And I, for me, I feel like people often are trying to be 
a warrior all the time everywhere where that's not necessarily what it's getting at. It's just taking, to me, it was like, take care of yourself and be in a place of peace. And then if you need to defend or respond or do something, mm -hmm. you're able rather than be someone who sort of just is like, I'm anti, you know, confrontation sure, or whatever. Yeah. And I'm just going to focus on, you know, botanicals. And then, well, now there's a time for you to act and you're that gardener in the war, right? Yeah. So what's it mean to you? You want, I, you want to I, share on that? Yeah, I think it's kind of sums up everything you talked about. You know, like a lot of stuff you talked about from your cleanse to the cold bath, to all that, like there's people who probably would think that it's unnecessary. You know, mm -hmm. it's unnecessary. Um, but I think the biggest part of that, that quote for me was, uh, I'd rather be prepared. And a gardener in a war is not going to be prepared. He's going to be out, out armed and he's just not going to be able to handle, handle a war. And it's funny, the segue, perfect timing, because that's actually the back piece is I have that now across my back and there's a warrior on the left side, mm -hmm. a gardener on the right side, and it all came to fruition because it stuck with me because there, there are certain times, you know, like as a business owner um, and, and I think just overall qualifying as, as a leadership in our, a leader in our space, um, you don't have as many people holding you accountable. You know, when you work for a company, you, you typically have a boss or team holding you accountable. So it takes a lot more ownership to hold yourself accountable. But I'll still have days um, where I'm like, why, 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 you know, why, yeah. why do I need to do this? You don't need to do this. And, and I could very easily get away with it and not, there's no repercussion from anybody. But, you know, the warrior is never going to be out, out armed. And, and it's really funny the time we're in right now because we're kind of in a war in yeah. a lot of like with this pandemic and shutdown. I don't think anybody, even myself included, would have ever expected it. You know, our, our business has been interrupted. Our personal lives have been everything about our lives pretty much has been interrupted, adjusted. And I think even like politicians are in some way calling it a war, you know, yeah. it's a, it's a, a, a nationwide war and you're seeing a lot of people who, who are very unprepared. And there's a lot of people that are up in arms and, and I don't think it's just like from a health standpoint, like financially being a warrior, you know, are you, mm -hmm. are you prepared for, to weather any sort of storm? And I was having a conversation with a guy the other day about, you know, there's always that rule of thumb, have six months worth of, worth of expenses tucked away. You know, I think you go down the line with a, a, a more of a warrior's mindset on everything. It's not to be like, hey, when you look at me, I'm, I'm militant. I don't have a sense of humor or personality. Mm -hmm. Like, no, it's not at all that. But you're always prepared. You know, mm -hmm. you're always prepared. And, and, and when I heard that, it struck such a chord because um, there, there's plenty of times that I question like certain things I'm doing and it and, and certain stuff sacrifice I've had to make, whether it's like, you know, I've been through two relationships and starting businesses and what I'm doing. I've been through, you know, like certain friendships and other there's there's sacrifices, not going to certain out of town events or act like there's there's a, a list of sacrifices that you can't help but wake up and some some days and be like, why? You know, yeah. like why? And when I heard that I'm like, well, that's why. That's why. You know, mm -hmm. I, I feel I feel confident now that I'll always be prepared for whatever is coming. And I'm not expecting a war every day. You know, I hope there's never is a war, but it's always that the, the preparedness for, for whatever, for whatever comes. So that's really cool that you saw that. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd been hanging on to that for, um, a couple years. And, and, and it was also a light bulb moment when I have like, I was a quarter way through with, with my back, not going back to that all the time, but I'm like, dude, that's all that, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm so into it. It's such a core that I'm like, I'm, that's gonna, that's what's going to finish off my back. And, uh, hopefully that kind of answers. No, for sure. And I, I it, and you know, I'm pretty good at throwing questions out there as yeah. a lawyer and setting it up because I, I had a good feeling that that was where that was going. Um, I, I recall those two posts stick out to me. Um, for some reason in my mind, I had them separate cause you had, you had somebody, um, professional photographer take some pictures of your back finished by the mm -hmm. ocean. You know, I remember that cause I like tattoos. I like your art. Oh, you yeah. know, I'm into, you know, good artwork, um, whether it's on this medium or the wall or whatever. So I like stuck that and I know that they played together, but I wasn't linking them up for some reason. You know what I mean? There was a separate post. You're right. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I wrote about it a, a, a ways back too. So yeah, you're right. But it was one of those, it is one of those things where it's like, this is what successful people do. Mm -hmm. You know, I know you're nowhere near the end and you don't walk around town like, oh, my name's Peter Success Lemke. Like, mm -hmm. you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not the way you're very humble and you like, you just work and you build that relationship capital, but people need to learn. Like the, I think a big takeaway from this podcast and any podcast I have is like, I want to bring on interesting people from different business backgrounds, industries, whatever, because the, the success always leaves clues and mm -hmm. you question yourself. I go through it. Everyone goes through it. Like, why am I doing this? Is it worth it? Totally. Why can't I just go charge it. I'm going out there. I'm going to do this. And then 
that mentality in the back of your mind, you're not looking for a war. You don't want a war. No, but yeah. when you have the peace of mind of like, I have to be prepared for that rainy day because it's going to come eventually. Mm-hmm. It may be a sprinkle. It may be a hurricane. We don't know, mm-hmm. right? We can't control that. But what we can control is what we do in mm-hmm. our disciplines, even when no one's looking, um, no one's watching, or you're not seeing the benefit of it. And totally. I think like your mindset with that transcends you know, health, wealth, whatever, all those things, you can apply it to all the phases of your life to better yourself. Yeah. And I, I think warrior can, some people can take that as like, that's really intense. Mm-hmm. I think it, it could also be described as just being the best version, like the best yeah. version of yourself. And I think why it's so important to me is, is by whether I call it a, a warrior, best version, I also know what I, what I invest in myself and put out there to you or anybody out to the world. I'm going to track that back. And, yeah. and I, I only, you know, talking about relationship capital. I only want to work with people, um, whether it's in business that work for me, around me, um, that, ha- that, are, that are similar, that are, are, are being the best version of themselves. And, and it doesn't limit there. Like I want, I want a relationship with someone like it sounds you have with your wife. You know, it's the same thing. You are, you are out to be the best version of yourself, with my, which might be different than my best version of myself, but we're both doing, we're both on that, on that same trail. Yeah. And so I, I think some people might hear like, Oh, that's, that's super, super intense. It's not really, you know, it's not really. And, and I, and I just, I'm a firm believer that a lot of like the relationships I've attracted personally and professionally are a result of that, you know, cause if mm-hmm. I was putting out just a, a half ass version of myself, I'm going to get a half ass, you know, connection or half ass yeah. connection with people out there that are similar. So I, I love dude. And, and, and even your podcast, my podcast, there's nothing better. Like I think nothing excites me more. I swear than having conversations with someone who knows that, that is on that same mission. Yeah. You know, it's it, uh, dude, I, I'll fall asleep to the intro credits of a movie like you, but I will stay up till the wee hours talking to someone that really just ignites that part. Cause you know, like dude, they're doing it, but they're doing it from a different perspective and towards a different goal. Mm-hmm. I'm interested. Yeah. You know, and that's why like, I, I'm so, I'm sure you're critical about who you have on here. I'm so critical. And like, I know the time it goes into it. I want to not, I don't want to be fabricated, engaged in this. I want to be fully engaged yeah. in it. And now if I can actually stage that and get in front of these people, like it's, it's one of the more exciting things for me right now of all the stuff that we're doing or I'm doing and working on, um, all together. So, yeah, no, I appreciate it. You know, from having your own podcast, there's a lot that goes into the, the light camera action and, mm-hmm. you know, I don't bullshit anybody out there. There's a purely selfish interest for me in doing this is because what you described, I, mm-hmm. I, anyone who knows me knows I can talk. Mm-hmm. I like to talk. I enjoy it. I enjoy other conversations better than others right and what you described is exactly it like Mm -hmm. if i'm not in i'm done my body shuts down but if i'm into it and i like my interest in this is giving giving value to people who are listening to this podcast and giving that roadmap out and examples of people that can resonate with listeners right not everyone wants to be a lawyer that's why my podcast is not 100% 100% law. We're looking at legal issues. We're looking at that. Those will come up. Those totally. they affect laws affect our life every which way you look. You can't get away from them. You know, it's a good and a bad thing. Keep some mm-hmm. society in order, right? But the other thing is, I like that. Like, you can see when you start looking at yourself and working on yourself, not comparing, right? You're just working on yourself. Then you go out and you're in a room. It, you have a conversation. You see them and like Jeff and I say it a lot because. We spend a lot of time talking and getting together, but you're like, oh, he gets it. Mm -hmm. Like she gets it. Mm -hmm. And it it means exactly what you're talking about. Like they're on a different journey than me, but they're investing into themselves, like not material things, but they're like, look, I have a deficiency here. I want to improve that. Or, hey, I want to, I want to achieve something, right? If you want to get something you've Mm -hmm. never had, you got to do something you've never done. Yeah. Right. Like, and so my self interest is like giving back and giving people good examples, but then learning, like I'm a student every day. I want to learn from you. Like I want to learn about the ice plunge. I want to know what this tub's about and implementing it in my life because then I can improve and then I become, you know, and so I appreciate your time and coming on here. Like I know you got a lot of demands um, and we're going to wrap up with some, some fun ones. What, uh, some takeaways, you got a new project, 
Let's talk about that first because this is the thing. It's been coming up. New restaurant, new restaurant. <laughs> it's Pokey Vita. Go try it. Everyone loves it. Everyone, <laughs> I see the Instagram six days in a row, two days in a row. <laughs> Patrick back here behind the camera. Oh, dude, I went there. It was fire. <laughs> I can't have it yet. I cannot eat it. I cannot wait to eat it. I love sushi. I love pokey. I love fish. So, like, tell me about this thing because people are going to think you're nuts. And I'm sure you've heard it. Like, oh, oh yeah. now you're now you're in the restaurant game. Number one, but you, you yeah. got a team. But two, you're going to open in the middle of a pandemic when most restaurants are thrown down, furloughed. Like, yeah, yeah. What's up with this project, man? Tell us about it. Opening during the pandemic was never the the, the plan. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what like, a lot of people said. That even even we were on the the morning news the morning of our grand opening. Gina Latina, mm -hmm. thank you for putting us on the news. And the news anchor got it kind of rubbed me like, and she's like, "How brave opening during a pandemic." That's how she ended the bit. I'm oh, like, yeah. I wasn't planning on that. You know, it's just the situation we're in. Uh, our original plan was to open. We're in East Village. We're a block from Petco Park. We were uh, partnered with the East Village Association. We were going to open with uh, the Padres season opener, game yeah. opener. So we had this big plan. The block party happens at, like right in our front doorstep. We were going to be part of it, and you know, you know, all the bells and whistles that come with mm -hmm. with opening day in any city. And then this happened. Um, and there's a strategy behind it and, and we're fortunate that in 10 years of working in hospitality that we talked about, we've got to work with a lot of restaurant brands. We've got to work with a lot of hotel brands, yeah. bars that I've learned what to do, but most importantly, our, our sweat equity is like, I've learned what not to do, what doesn't work, where not to go into. So we went into quick service restaurants because we realized, you know, a lot of the, the hamstring for, for restaurant businesses or food services, the amount of overhead, you know, so QSR is an up and coming space to be in right now. And if you think about, you know, like what are the perks of Chipotle? Chipotle has a good, a good bowl, but it, it's quick. You go in yeah. and, and, uh, and something I've coined is like everybody is part of the menu. So when you go mm -hmm. to a restaurant, you're evaluating their staff, their decor, all that, but the menu is a big one. Am I going to like it? You, you build your poke bowl. So yeah. like we've made you part of the menu. So the psychology of our consumer now is like every single bowl and they go in, which is why people can have six bowls and we've only been open for four days. Because yeah. each bowl they build out and make different. But it was really funny. Like QSR was a big one, but it was, few people know, like uh, it was a trip I was on in, in Big Bear two years ago. And I actually wrote an article about um, that we're trying to get pushed out like by a big uh, a press company on how it actually started, but I was in Big Bear visiting for a vacation and there was this little fucking tiny pokey stand off one of the main roads, had a line down the block, never heard of it. I was just driving by, I went up, first time eating pokey. I still talk to the guy who owns it and runs it and he was the most hospitable, nice fucking guy. And I was hooked and I did what people are doing here. I was there for the weekend, I ate it three times. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually then, I came back and saw him like a month later. And I'm like, I wanna bring this to, to San Diego. We don't have any good, it was just the tip of the iceberg of Pokey back then, this was 2018. And I loved his brand, loved what they're about. And they were already moving their location onto Big Bear or the Village Drive, which is where all the bars and restaurants, yeah. so they're kind of tied up. And I hit a point like, dude, I love those guys, but I think we can create just as good of a brand with, this is what we do. Like, Pete, what are you talking about? This is what you do and they're great, but like, I also don't want to wait on, on them to pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. So then we turned a corner and, and we decided like, let's, let's create our own brand, our own product, our own service. And this is our first, like we've worked with several, um, brands. We still do in town. This is our first company owned, um, yeah. restaurant. So there's a lot more, uh, it's your baby. It's our baby. Yeah. Um, and, and, and also too, like, Quick, healthy, and affordable is what we know as a consumer you're looking for, especially in the hustle and bustle of downtown. If you're trying to get something quick, likely you're going to get something that's unhealthy. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to get something fast, it's, it's, it's just those are kind of the, the ebbs and flows of it. Where ours is affordable, it's you're not spending, you're, you're equal to if you're going to get like a sandwich or anything else that's like I'm on lunch break or I'm going out to dinner. You're, you're in the similar category. But if you wanted to get fresh, like raw fish, typically you have to go and sit down and go through the full ser service motions like a sushi place. Yeah. We're, we're the bridge, you know? So it's, it's, it's been interesting. Our plan is this is our flagship location. The plan is to duplicate them in San Diego and outside. So we're looking outside of the, of, of California franchising or I don't know. Not yet. I don't know. You know, franchising that's, uh, that can get really, really tricky, but you know, I try not to think too, too far. I used to think far down the road on everything. Right now, we're just perfecting it right now, and the feedback yeah. we've gotten has been absolutely incredible. So just keeping that momentum going, and if something pops up along those lines, like we'll cross that bridge then. But uh, we've gotten off the ground. Considering we're in a pandemic, we couldn't have had a better grand opening for like so many reasons. 
um, as we did last week. So it's it's been great. Well, I got two things. One, you got 30 days to figure out your favorite bowl, best combo, it's because easy. I'm not thinking when I come in there. That's easy. Don't tell me now because I'm going to want to eat it. But I got, look. That's fair. Keep it yourself. That's fair. All right. I'll hit you up when I'm ready. I'll deliver it to you. I'll deliver it to you. You know, you've served your time. You put your 30 days. I'll bring it to you. I can't wait. All right. The second thing is, shout out to your girl, Gina the Latina, right? She's on a mic all day long. If she wants to come on the podcast, being Latina in this community, breaking ground, getting on the radio, being on a mic, you probably don't want to jump on another one when you're not on. But anytime you want to come on and share your story, you're welcome. Um, I'll hit you up. Uh, hopefully you accept. Shameless plugs, man. I, she, was on, she was our second guest, second or third. Mm-hmm. So that's an easy one. She, yeah. she, you'll sit and talk for, with her forever. She's got a story. She's awesome. Awesome, uh, awesome. It's one of those people, like, you feel like you know her. I've seen her around, never met her, never had a talk, but you hear her all the time on the radio, and, like, yeah. you get to know a little bit of her story, and she you should come. she has a day now named out. She has Gina Latina Day. Mm-hmm. That happened in 2018 or 19. I think, it's in, I think it just passed. But she has a day named after her. I'm like, jeez. And she's still, like, you sit across. She's just the most humble, nicest, mm-hmm. sweet little girl. So Yeah, and she... She never settled. That's why she'll have oh, a good yeah. story. And damn, the damn pokey, man. It's on my brain. Like Last <laughs> meal has always been sushi. So this is really a test. I was debating having you on so early. Day 31, I'll get you. I know. I can't wait. Um, other thing is, that's the new thing. Pokey Vita, you're still managing. You're going to have a lot of customers and clients to take care of when the economy opens back up. San Diego's transitioning. Let's give some final takeaways. Um sounds like the number one important thing that you you've expressed through our discussion today is like your mental sort of mental acuity awareness and, and mm-hmm. that time to have clarity with your thoughts to improve right mm-hmm. uh, what's one sort of suggestion hard suggestion you can give any of the listeners of uh, like a daily practice habit or routine that you would encourage them to implement to just really help focus or improve their life anyone who wants to just add a tool to their tool belt yeah so i mean we we talked about it enough but i think you have to like give yourself some some just you time so if Mm -hmm. if you're building a business plan a lot of people who are new and i just had a buddy who launched his first business you're so prone to getting people to feed opinion feedback opinion feedback that you just you don't buckle down and you actually write i'm not i'm not condoning you don't have to write a formal business plan because a lot of time that gets thrown out the window yeah but gather what you see, like the reality of it, not the not the digital reality, but like the reality of starting it, the cost, the motions you have to go through, the sacrifices you have to make if you actually really want to do it. Mm-hmm. And that requires removing all the distractions and actually putting some self thought into it. I think that for so many reasons is important for, for everybody right now. And not like this is a daily routine, but it I, I will, it was something you said that I think is a real summary of, of this and something I'm, I'm trying to live every day by is I think we get so wired and subject to what traditions say we need to do. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm now, I'm trying to not, not break, but I'm trying to bend tradition. You know, like there's so many things that you probably grew up with. Like you gotta be married by this age. You gotta buy mm-hmm. a house by this age. And, and, and why it stuck out when you were saying is your criminal defense attorney, there's a shitload of tradition there, yeah. how it's done, what you should do. You're out of line. Like mm-hmm. all that, and, and I see and what I respect is, and even talking about Dan in personal injury law, like you've bent and bent and bent, which was necessary. Otherwise, yeah. you know, cause I, I've known you too. And like the times will catch up, we'll, we'll be comfortable with each other. Say like, I'm, uh, this is just bothering me or mm-hmm. this is great. When you fall, pro- when you're falling victim to the traditions is usually also the times you're like, man, I'm just fucking not happy. Yeah. You know? And when you start like bending it and maybe rewriting a little bit of how your industry or your business or your, your life. I just think people are so bound by this box that you're put in, whether it's through your upbringing, through school, through like whatever it is that they're, they're in fear of like that. I can't in some way, shape or form bend it, whether it's like, I have to get married. So I'm going to marry the wrong person. Well, that's terrible. Yeah. You know, like I I'm, I'm set out right now, like, okay, 35 years old. Like what I thought that that should come with, when I was a kid, mm-hmm. holy fuck, is it different than right now? But I also, if, if it would have came, if I would have stuck true to that, I wouldn't be as happy as I am right yeah. now. You know, so w- w- what am I going to rather? You know, am I, am I going to follow the traditions, follow what was written? Or am I going to write write each page on my own and not look too far down the road at the, the final chapter and just write each page as it, as it comes? That's where I'm at, you know, because yeah. you get it. Like there's certain things when... 
when you're 25 versus you're 35, you have to, you don't have to, you don't have to do a lot of the stuff we think we have to do. We don't have to do, you know? And, and, and a lot of times that's when you start getting into what we were describing earlier is like, I'm just unhappy. I let this go and I let that go. And now all of a sudden I'm just, I'm, I went from the driver's seat to I'm sitting in the passenger, maybe even the back seat, and this car is just fucking going. Yeah. Like that sounds terrible, you know? So I don't know how you want to like how to summarize that up, but I'm, I'm trying to be like still focus on where I'm going, but what today, like fin- starting and finishing today is my most important thing, you yeah. know? And I, and I know like my big, big picture goal, um, it's there. But if, if all I do every single day is think about my five year, 10 year, this like, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to have terrible todays, you yeah. know? And, and I was doing that for a long time. Like even in the, rela- the last rela- relationship I was in, like, where is this going five years, 10 years? Like, but Pete, you're missing like right now, Yeah, you know? And, and so that's, that's a long winded, long winded answer, but that's, it's kind of where I'm at. No, but I think it'll resonate because they can apply it to their life. You know, yeah. any listener can apply it. Like not everything comes in a, a two word phrase that just nails it, right? Relationship mm-hmm. capital nails it. And that mm-hmm. means like a database worth of things to you and to me, but your explanation rings true. Like you have to have goal setting. There's intermittent goal setting. There's different goal setting. But if you're comparing today's microcosm to where you expect to accomplish five, 10 years down the road, it's rarely going to be enough that day to feel like you've made any significant progress totally. towards that goal. So you got to live your life, your story, right? Cause that's no one else is going to live it but you. And when you're mm-hmm. gone, there's not another one, right? So mm-hmm. people need to, stay true to yourself, learn the landscape and you can bend and yeah. you get more enjoyment because you don't have to live someone else's life or, or do it this way because everyone else did it that way. If your way that you feel like doing it, that you're comfortable with is still within the rules of whatever game you're playing, you know, criminal procedure, whatever, then it's acceptable. And don't be afraid to do something different. Totally. Like, yeah. And, and I think I, I just read a couple months ago, Simon Sinek's uh, recent book, the infinite game. Mm-hmm. And I compare so much of, of business to sports. Yeah. There's so many similarities, but something I was doing, uh, and I'm, I'm somewhat bought into his mindset of it is an infinite game. in the fact that I was looking at a lot of things in finite terms, as far as like, like financials, it's, it's common to do quarterly financials, yeah. annual financials, and just your overall business. Like the way he broadens it and makes it look as infinite game can also be applied to our personal life too. Yeah. Where you're, you're usually just thinking in finite terms. And I also to it, what you're saying is you have to balance out what I like call playing offense and defense. Like right now in our podcasting, for me, it's a way of playing uh, defense is that's when you're taking your, the, the readings in your life, the, mm-hmm. the exercising, you're playing defense, the learning, you know, you're learning and building that, but then you also have to, what a lot of people aren't doing right now. And I hate using the term millennials, you do have to go on an offense eventually. Yeah. You have to go on an offense, and it might feel a little risky, might be a little scary, but you learn a shitload of that playing defense. You got to go play it now. Get out yep. there and play. Where there was a long time, all I was doing was offense, 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 the grind, the hustle, the. Off. And I'm like, dude, I'm not playing like, but I'm not learning in defense. So balancing that for me has been has been critical. And playing defense, it might not feel like I'm not gaining any ground because the only time I am when I'm offense, I'm firing off this and I'm doing that. Like, no, the defense for me has become so much more important because that's where I'm becoming a bigger, bigger, better, smarter version of myself Mm -hmm. to play better offense. You know, as before, I'm like, I'm not learning anything new. I'm just playing the same fucking, again, I'm referring in in sports terms. I'm playing the same goddamn game, like with the same playbook. I'm like, no, go play defense. Go yeah. play defense. So learn some new tricks. So, and yeah. You have bigger plays when you come back, you have better strategy and your plays have more impact. Totally. You know, and I think now it's like we're in this balance where if people are doing anything, because I'm not a, a negative person, but I, I'm a realist and I see a lot of people that love to complain um, about life or their situation and they're not doing anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, nothing. They're not mm-hmm. even playing defense. They didn't even show up. But the first step is I see most people are somewhat afraid or reluctant to hard work because they think for some reason it's going to be easy. They maybe get into the game by playing, as you call defense, and they start soaking it up. But mm-hmm. you hit the nail on the head where you have to then go apply it. If, totally. If you read these books and you don't apply them in your life, maybe it entertains you reading it, but you're not getting the true value until you apply it. Totally. You know, and that's how you're going to level up and improve yourself. Um, Speaking of books, let's give them, give them a, a go-to book rec- recommendation. I just finished one called The Four Agreements. 
that I've already pushed off on like 10 different people. Mm -hmm. Incredible book. It's so simple. It talks about four different agreements to make with yourself on how to handle um, anything in life. It seems simple, but the, the way he like articulates it is incredible. And to plug another one that I read years ago and I still refer, I actually referred it to a, a girl, a friend of mine this morning asked, um, is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Stephen Pressfield's got a bunch of different books that are great, but that one's really um, struck with me. So War of Art and Four Agreements are great. Okay, good. Good, good, good. So we got that. We got some takeaways. We got the new venture. We got some books. Um, let's see. Is there one more goal that you have? You guys have another venture that's that's popping up in the in the restaurant space. Can we talk, can we hint yeah, at so that? I, yeah. So I kind of subtly said it, and it's like it's super super fresh, but really excited about. Um, and we're in the red zone, so I feel like yeah. it's okay to talk about it. Um, but as of like this week, uh, the coffee that you guys serve deliciously here in this office, we are in the process of taking over the, the operation. It's mm -hmm. called Seven Brewing. Um, so we're really pumped on that. How much detail we haven't yeah. gotten to yet, that's definitely gonna be a follow-up because it's a, it's a pretty large operation, but it, you know, since running the bus company to where we are now, I've always looked for the easiest, not easy, the best opportunities are ones that I can use um, past our other businesses yeah. to springboard us into. Some leverage, yeah. Exactly. And, and like if, if I were to say, hey, tomorrow I want to start a, a real estate company, I'd be a fish out of water. And like I'd really have to like get educated on it, d devise new resources, like figure out the industry where we've always looked like, okay, where can we kind of pivot or add supplemental business? And this for us is like, We've worked in hospitality, which is a big placement piece for this. I originally was in beverage before I started this. Um, you know, where these are sold is off premise and on premise, which we have crazy relationships with. It's mm -hmm. in sports stadiums, it's in businesses. It, uh, the partnership and people involved with it, it's, it's like uh, nothing's ever a for sure home run, but it's, you get a gut IQ uh, after a while running a business that you just know like, Oh fuck, everything about this feels right. Tastes right. Touch right. We have to fight. We have to mm -hmm. go. And it's, and it's really fortunate to have like-minded people partnered with you that have the same, let's go, let's do it. Yeah. You know? And sometimes hesitation and in, in timing can spoil a deal. And we're, and, 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 and again, it's kind of crazy striking a deal like this during a, a shutdown or pandemic is wild, but I'm a firm believer that if you're not looking for the angles right now, um, coming out of this, cause there's going to be a lot of them, then you're going to miss, you yeah. know? So I, I've, I've done my best to, you know, not get stir crazy during this, not make any, like, I don't want to disrupt or pivot our business model because this is an unrealistic time we're sitting in right now. It's not going to last forever, but I do know a lot of shit's going to change, you yeah. know, and a lot of commerce is going to change. Our consumer behavior is going to be different. So there's going to be opportunities out there. And whether this was one, I think this would, this was going to happen regardless, um, whether the shutdown, it just kind of expedited it a little bit. And we, we now all have a little bit more time to focus on the actual deal itself. Um, but it's exciting, man. Like I, I have a weird, I have a weird, I think, uh, burning still to be in beverage cause I worked for a couple years in, in B2B beverage sales. So it's exciting to come full circle. And it's one of those like all the relationships over the last 10 years, it's going to be great to put this product in, in front of them, mm -hmm. um, and push. So I'll have way more, more on that to come. It's, it's fresh. It's brand. It's like super new. Yeah. Again, it's a red zone. We're not in the end zone, but we can taste the end zone. We're yeah. like, we're right there. Um, that you'll definitely see it. I, I'm telling you within the month before you finish your cleanse, okay. it'll, be, it'll be done and, and, and it'll be out there. It's, it is a good product and it's another thing I can't have on my cleanse. So if I was a predictor, since you're just knocking businesses out of things I can't have, you're probably going to jump into an alcohol business <laughs> after the coffee business because I can't have that during the cleanse yeah, either. Yeah, my bad, so. man. It's all good, Sorry man. I'm just that. like your crystal ball. I can, based <laughs> on my cleanse restrictions, I know where your business is going. Um, but no, really, man, Pete, it's been like 10 years, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see what's next. Like we got a little preview, but I know there's going to be so much more because this train's just going. Your your relationships, your business is growing. You're not settling, right? Like you're mm -hmm. always setting new goals, and that's one thing that's always been so impress like impressive, regardless of the market um, or whatever's thrown at you in life. You you don't. You keep your mind very sharp and focused, and limiting distractions on what you can control. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm excited for it, man. I can't thank you enough for coming on uh, and being a guest. You're always welcome back. <laughs> and I, I cannot wait till day 31 where I can have some poke. I might wash it Hell down yeah. with my own sake and a little coffee. Who knows? Uh, hell yeah. And, I, and I'm going to eventually flip the to table here and get you on our podcast and do the same to you. So. You let me know. I, I'd love to be a guest. 100%. This was great, man. Cool. Thanks, Pete. Have a good one. Likewise.